Hello again and welcome back to Illegally Sighted. This is Jesse and I am back for another demo time video and this is one I've been rather curious about for quite some time. Uh, this demo came out for the Steam Next Fest here in early October. Not sure if it's going to stick around till after October. Sometimes demos do, sometimes they don't. But we are looking at Stories of Blossom. And I'm not totally sure. It kind of almost seems like a storybook point-and-click adventure style game um, from what little like footage I've seen of it so far. The reason that I'm curious about this is because the developers of this game are have, they have really been um, out there on social media not just promoting the game but promoting how hard they're working to make sure that the game is as accessible to as many players as they can. So there are <clears throat> a lot of different accessibility features in here. Um, they did tweet when the demo came out. They said not quite all the features are there, but the vast majority of them are. And uh, when the full game comes out, of course, all of the features will be implemented. But um, in this game, I should point out, it seems like, at least to me, that it may be geared toward a younger audience. You know, so if, like, let's say you're an adult and... You know, some people, they have this thing, oh, I can't play kitty games, you know, that kind of a thing. I'm glad that there's a game that is friendly to um, younger gamers and that is also working toward great accessibility because, you know, there's been a few games lately where, <clears throat> you know, they've been good games, but even some audio games like Blind Drive and even Circus Master's Revenge, you know, you got people cussing, you got people... Um, you know, all the violence and stuff. And so, like I said, if you're, <clears throat> if you're um, wanting to target a game so that, you know, everyone can more, um, I don't want to say that, well, can more safely play, um, that's cool, you know, and I totally respect that. When I went into the game, I, um, this, I've never played this before. I went into the game, I started recording before I went in, but the first time I went in, I don't know, my computer was just being strange. And uh, it like didn't focus on it correctly and the window just kind of hung. So I went into it again. And the first thing that this game does, it does come up with text-to-speech. And it says, hey, press any key to continue. You are then given some uh, a menu of accessibility. Well, actually, no, then you're given like just basic instructions like, hey, use left or right arrow to go between these buttons, hit space bar to activate them, and then um, you're, there were two full menus of accessibility features, um, starting with like text-to-speech, audio description, I mean we'll go through some of those, so let's, settings. we have, let's go into settings, audio settings, okay, option, input settings, subtitle settings, visual settings, Okay, let's just go through these because I want to see what all they put in here. Okay, audio. Volume settings. Option one of two. Press space to select. Press right button to go back. Audio accessibility settings. Volume settings. Oh, okay. Two. That's interesting. So we have vol. Okay, let's. Master. Adjust the overall volume of ambience. Adjust the volume of the. Oh wow. Voiceover. Adjust the volume of the voiceover. Music. Adjust the volume of the music. General sound effects. UI sound effects. Text to speech. Audio description. Nice. Text to speech Adjust has its the own. The audio descriptions. Close setting. Nice. Audio. Audio accessibility. Settings. Okay. What's under audio accessibility? Text to speech. Yep. Reads back voice. The voice that reads back the text. Oh, well, let's see. Value. James. Option two of. Six. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That is so cool that they put the text-to-speech James voice, because I'm like, man, I'm like, that's not David. I use this voice in Voice Dream Reader on iPhone all the time, so, no, James is, let's see what other voices James, they got here. Beth, Molly, close setting, Molly, Beth, James, Beth. Let's see what Beth sounds set like. Option set to Beth. Speed, the speed of the text-to-speech voice. Eh. Voice. I don't care. Voice She's a little too high Beth pitch. Beth. Molly. Let's see what Molly set sounds like. Option set to Molly. Okay, you know what? For being Beth. a kid's game, Space. that actually makes sense. Molly. Beth. 
Jane. Option set I want to go back to James. I like James. Press, space, speed. So we got speed. speed that's awesome. Space. Current value, 110. And I'm going to leave that for the video. I would probably speed it up slightly for myself, but... Pitch. The pitch of the so we can lower the pitch voice. if I wanted to try Current to lower value, Beth's voice. Input instructions. Text to speech reads back input instructions. Current value. Oh, one. cool. You Option, can. Five of six. That's cool because once you get used to the game, you don't need that extra fluff. It's kind of like a verbosity option that a screen reader would have. Nice job, guys. Audio descriptions. A voice description of what is happening visually on screen. Oh, heck yeah. Current value on. Now, Option, six what I. Six. When we get into the game, what I'm really curious about here. The Last of Us 1 just came out on PS5. And that was like the first AAA game that had audio description for cutscenes. This one is supposed to have it, I guess, during gameplay? So that, I mean, this, this indie game here is even possibly taking it even further than The Last of Us. So 2022 is killing it right now. Close setting. Audio. Okay, I, we gotta go through the... Oh, crap. Okay, hold Press on. Settings. I hit Audio escape settings. and I thought, okay. Input settings. Let's just see what's uh, here. Navigation. Because again... How you will interact with the game. Current value. Focus. Um, Option. One of three. So there's Press two options here. To select. Press. Right button. To go back. I'm tempted to turn those extra announcements off, actually. Um, there's focus and point. So you could use this, like, if, you know... I, I want to go through these accessibility features because, you know, so many people, especially in the blind, you know, the blind in the blindness culture or whatever, um, they tend to think, oh, accessibility is blind accessibility, it's screen reader accessibility. Yes, that is, a, that is woefully lacking in the vast majority of games, but there are, of course, many other levels and many other types of accessibility. So I want to just, again, I want to look at how... Um, the accessibility is in this game for everybody. Control settings. Okay, Option so we can remap. Three. That's cool. Input delay. The time delay before a new input is registered. Current okay, value. makes Zero. sense. Go back to the previous page. Setting. Input settings. Subtitle settings. Okay. Subtitles. Displays text for all dialogue lines at the bottom of the screen. Current value. On. Option one of six. What I like also, and I really should have brought up right away, you have the text to speech, but if you if you want to even turn that off and play this as a low vision gamer, the clarity, the clean font, and more most importantly, the size. You, you know, it looks nice. I love the borders around every option. Like you can clearly tell, like everything is separated. You have the highlight color, and I think I can change that actually, which I might do um, to make it less subtle. Um, but like I said, how many times have have I complained about small text? And it looks totally fine. You know, you see that like menus and option screens, they're like, you. oh, you want to have this big picture on your title screen, so you cram the title in the lower left-hand corner, you know, that takes up an eighth of the screen. Um, no, you don't have to do that. Advancing dialogue. How dialogue progresses once a line has finished. Current value, auto. Okay, auto or manual, two, that's cool. Six, audio captions. A text description of any audio events triggered in-game. Current value. Very on. good. Interaction labels. A short description of the currently highlighted interaction. Current value. Okay, on. that'll be helpful for Option. visual Four, as well. Six. Input prompts. Show the input that needs to be performed to interact with the currently highlighted interaction. Okay. Customize the subtitle's appearance. Oh, Option. wow. Six Let's just look. Six. I want to look in here real text quick. Size. Subtitle oh, text wow. Size. Nice. Current outline. Subtitle text outline. Current highlight hints. Highlight speaker names. Show the name of the character. Speaker intonation. A descript color Wait, speaker what? intonation. A descriptor that states how the line of dialogue was spoken. Current oh. value off. Color settings for subtitles and captions. Nice. Up. Go back to the previous page. Subtype advancing dialogues. Go back to the previous page. 
Skin subtitles. Alright, let's look at the visual. Settings. Windowed mode. Play the game windowed. The color that is used when you highlight and interact. Let's change this. The hue of the color. Option saturation. Hue. The hue. Set the hue of. Set the hue of the color to orange. Set the hue of the color to yellow. Option three of. Um. Nine. Space to select. Press I wonder. Right button to go back. That's a little verbose. Like I really just want to hear the color. You, maybe you could shorten it to hue yellow, hue green. You know, set the color to to yellow. Set the color. I mean, it's not bad. It's perfectly good. Um, but when you're looking at you know descriptive versus efficiency. You know, that's one thing that screen readers often kind of struggle with or have kind of figured out over the years. Um, sometimes the thing, you know, even omitting a couple words here and there to be like, you know, um, like I said, let, let's... Uh... Set the hue of the color to chartreuse green. Set the hue of the color to green. Set the hue of the color to spring green. Set the hue of the color to cyan. Set the hue of the color to azure. Yeah, let's do cyan. Set let's try that once. Set the hue of the color to cyan. So you could just say, um, set hue, cyan, or hue, cyan, or you could, I don't even know if you could just say cyan, you know, it just kind of depends. I mean, like I said, what you're doing here is not wrong. Um, I guess it's just, you know, 30 plus years of screen reader use of like, give me the info. <laughs> um, but it is balance. Press yeah, you see now that the, Press now the... Right button to go back. Now the color has changed a little bit. Okay, so saturate close setting visuals. The color that is used with text size, global text size, current value fifty. Okay, I'm Option curious. Three. Decrease the increase the global text size. Option two. Of huh. Two. Option increase to fifty five. Option increase. Option decrease to fifty five. Oops. Increase the global text size. Option increase to 60. Decrease close. Decrease the global tech. Close. Setting. Okay, so 60 is Press as big as it can get. To select. Press right button to go back. That could be a little bit clearer as far as like taking a, like just saying, oh, but you know, maybe saying when you hit the max, giving some sort of clue that you're at the max, because all of a sudden it goes back down. You know, it if I hit space again, it auto puts you onto the minus button, and it. You know, was, that's why I went back up again, because I'm like, wait a minute, did I hit something I didn't mean to? So kind of giving just a quick thing of like, um, either an audio tone or like, a, you know, 60, some sort of indicator that you were maxed. But very cool. Um, decrease the close, let's decrease bring the her down to 50 option again. Decrease to, option decrease to 50. There we go. Option one. Up okay. Two. New game. Press and to select press and I know they're right going for like a really light sort of a theme for the game to focus previous item shush um and I don't know how this would interfere with the game itself um but a lot of low vision gamers you know who have some usable vision find a lot of white space actual bright white to be rather, um, you know, anything with like light sensitivity and glare, uh, having everything being so bright white, I don't know if having some sort of like a dark theme could be a possibility, um, you know, having a black or even like a, like a dark blue, like a night sky blue, um, you know, keep everything else the same, but just maybe make it a little bit easier because there's a lot of white here and you know I I personally operate in dark mode whenever I can so I don't know like I said I don't know if that would mess up or be possible this far into development to be able to do that um, because let's, let's just finally play the game and I can kind of see from there so Settings, new game let's do it I know nothing about this story. A softly painted watercolor appears. Two characters are happily playing chess on a table by the warm glow of a fire. 
Oh, Human narrated. Beat me again, have you? You're getting too good at this. A young girl with long brown hair tied in a ponytail in a pink nightgown kneels by the table with a smile of victory. I think you're letting me win, Grandpa. That was just too easy. Now, now, nobody likes a sore winner. Uh. Sitting opposite in a comfy blue chair is a caring old man wearing a green knitted jumper and soft slippers. It's almost like his a. His glasses balance off the bridge of his nose as its the audio description rises with his smile. But it's more almost like an Best audio book. Ready for bed, my dear. We Which is cool. You're missing your big day tomorrow. What's the matter? A close up shot of Clara. She lowers her head. Her face full of doubt. Tomorrow is my first day back at school, Grandpa, and... I'm worried no one will like me. Oh, my dear Clara, you have no need to worry. Come here. Have I ever told you the story about Annie and the Crumbles? Hm? There once was a king from a land far away who was sick with worry about his village's festival. He worried and worried the preparations would not be ready in time. To the point, he became physically ill. Clara imagines a clear spring day. On a stump deep in thought sits a crispy crumb, like that from a biscuit. I think this could work if he you had like a, a starry sky background or something for a dark theme. Just when he was about to lose all hope around the water or the paintings and saw him in this horrible state. You have no need to worry, O oh King of the Crumbles. I will help you. Standing heroically is Clara as the adventurer. <clears throat> she wears a yellow backpack, blue t-shirt, and a purple skirt. With the little energy he had left. The king thanked the girl and pointed her in the direction of his village. I really like the hand-drawn art here. Annie the adventurer walks into a rural area. It is a calm spring day with clear blue skies and fresh green grass on hills. At the yep. end of a long winding dirt path, the Crumble village stands in the distance. Oh, that must be the Crumbles village over there. Ticket booth. Press right arrow to focus next item. Press left arrow to focus previous item. Press space to select. Okay, let's, uh, so yeah, instead of mousing around, um, like a point and click, we can snap move, which is great. Ticket collector. Sidebar. Ticket booth. Okay, what is sidebar? Ticket collector. Sidebar. Pause menu. Select your diary ah. if you need help. Backpack. Diary. Sidebar. Ticket booth. Sidebar. Ticket booth. All right, let's look at the ticket booth. Okay, she walks up to it. Behind a blue lemonade stand with a sign of a golden ticket stands a crumble wearing a straw sun hat, happily fanning festival tickets in her hand. One ticket to the festival, please. I'll put this in my backpack for safekeeping. Okay. Ticket booth. Ticket collector. Blocking the path to the Crumbles village was a tiny crumble holding a stop sign. There was no moving him without a ticket. I have my ticket right here. Now, where did I put it? Okay. Ticket collector. Sidebar. Pause menu. Backpack. Select the ticket to give to the ticket collector. Ticket. Item one of one. Press ticket booth. Press space ticket collector. Sidebar ticket collector. Here you go. Okay. Easy enough. You just select the item you want to interact or you want to use to interact with it. 
The Crumbles were a small folk, not bothered by the busyness of everyday life. They always found an occasion to celebrate. Birthdays, holidays, first day of spring, uh, Tuesdays. <laughs> Why not, hey? Why be boring? Once she arrived, it did indeed look like some form of celebration was on its way. But something felt not quite right. So, like any good adventurer with a problem to solve, she got straight to work. Outside the town hall stands a three-tiered fountain. On top is a small statue of the king in a heroic pose. Behind empty stalls is a row of houses, all of different sizes. There is colorful bunting and balloons swaying in a light breeze. Fountain. Press space to select. So yeah, I mean, I can, you know, I can tell just by what we've played so far. I mean, this is obviously meant for, you know, younger kids, like a, like a storybook thing. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I'm glad that there's actually something that is this accessible for uh, younger gamers. And like I said, I mean, the charm of this is actually really well done. Um, the narration, you have different narrators for like... Um, you have the lady who describes the environments. You have the man narrator, like the grandpa. Um, you have your text-to-speech for the UI. Nothing gets in the way of each other. Um, you know, you have your ambient sound effects, your dialogue, um, everything like that. And yeah, like I said, I the only thing is, if there is, you know, this screen isn't too bad because um, you have it taken up mainly by the. Uh, the game graphics but like i said even having like a like for the outer border where the the artwork isn't you know maybe having like an option for like a dark theme maybe having it like a if you want to tie into like the artsy look of it you could either you know have it black or you can have it like a you know like i said a night sky maybe a starry sky just something like that to kind of cut down on some of the glare because when you were that one screen where she was talking to her grandpa and, you know, she was looking down in the middle of the screen. Like, there was just a lot of white around it. So, just a suggestion, an idea. I don't know if it's possible, but again, the amount of detail here is excellent. And we're getting descriptions. Again, this is something The Last of Us 1 didn't even do. Like, you had descriptions for the cutscenes... But when I enter a new screen here, I know it's a vastly different paced game, different type of game, but like, oh, I'm actually getting a description, if I were totally blind, of what's going on here. We've got the village houses, you got the fountain, you've got the king thing on the top of the fountain. Um, so, wow, a lot, of going, a lot going on with audio description this year, and I cannot wait for the Game Accessibility Conference later this month. It's going to be amazing. Alright, let's see the fountain here. What a lovely little fountain of the King of the Combos! Fountain. Okay. Press space to select. I don't know if other items you're going to have multiple, like... You know, a lot of old adventure games, let's see, you had a character... And when you highlighted a character, you would have, like, examine, or speak, or interact, whatever. I don't know if it gets that complex. Um, but yeah, so let's see what Path other things. Path to Cook's House. Sidebar. Path to Cook's House. Okay, I guess we're going to the cook. Very, very linear so far. The cook's house is shaped like a honeybee's hive. Beside it is a garden full of luscious flowers and vegetables. Path to town square. Rabbit hole. Huh. Bag of fresh soil. And I like the little outline rabbit around hole. it. See the rabbit hole there? You got the highlighter Bag around of there. fresh soil. Overgrown bush. Hmm. Door to cook's kitchen. Sidebar. 
Path to Town Square. Rabbit Hole. Okay, so Town Square is where we were. Let's look at the rabbit hole. I'm sure there'll be like a bunny that'll pop Can out. Can I have a bunny, Grandpa? Mm. Uh, we'll see, my little blossom. Path to Town Square. Rabbit Hole. What if I do it again? Can I have a bunny, Grandpa? Uh, we'll see, my little blossom. Rabbit hole. Bag of fresh soil. Press space to select. <clears throat> That's heavy. Luckily for me, I'm a strong adventurer. Okay, I took the whole Path bag, apparently. Square. Okay, fair enough. Press rabbit hole. Overgrown bush. This overgrown bush seems to be blocking the window into the Crumbles house. Path to Town's Rabbit Hole. Overgrown door to Cook's Kitchen. Press space to select. The small door there, girl. Upon entering the house, the adventurer was hit by the smells of a kitchen. A large pot of soup is on a table with precariously stacked bowls and cutlery. Beside a bathtub is a wood burning stove, the yep. fire just glowing embers. Though her attention was quickly drawn to the cook, fighting with a vegetable bulb. Standing at a workbench is a crumble wearing an apron. Over the soil-covered table, she is struggling with a large turnip-shaped bulb. He has little hands and an unhappy expression. The king's favorite part of every celebration was the cook's famous crumble soup. But without this particular plant, the soup would not be as delicious as she wanted. Hello, Mr. Bulb. Why don't you want to be planted? The Bulb didn't like the new home the Crumble was trying to give him. So he refused until a better one was found. Well, he gee. He the adventurer a shopping list of everything he wanted. First on the list, a large pot with fresh soil. Don't worry, Mr. Bulb. I'll find a better home for you. Pot of soup. Pr curtains. Bathtub. Furnace. The cook. Door to outside. Sidebar. Pause menu. Backpack. Bag of fr Pause menu. Bag of fr Sharp clippers. Press. Space. Pot of soup. Curtains. Bathtub. Furnace. The cook. I've got the soil. I just need to find a suitable pot to put it in. Oh, okay. Oh, the Sharp bathtub. Clippers. Okay, I Press get it. Space to select. So do I still have sidebar, door to outside, sharp pot of soup, curtains, bathtub. This crumbles bathtub looks like a giant plant pot. Sharp clippers. Okay, Press so space to select. Sidebar. Pause backpack. I wasn't sure if you had to go into the backpack again. Back. Pause menu. Bag of what you do. Clippers. Pot of soup. Curtains. Bathtub. This will make a perfect home for Mr. Bulb. With the bulb in hand, the cook walks over to the bathtub, now full of rich soil. The cook plants him with ease and steps aside. Mr. Bulb seems happier as he hugs the soil around him. <laughs> I should check his list to see what he wants next. Sharp clippers. Press space to select. I'll just borrow these. I don't want any of the crumbles getting hurt. Okay, well, we've got that Pot in our backpack soup. now. Press space to select. This must be the famous crumble soup, but it's not ready for tasting just yet. Pot of soup. Curtains. Let there be light. Or not. Oh. Oh, there okay, I see where. Outside blocking the window. Okay, we're going to use the clippers Pot on the bushes to give Press sunlight to, to the select. bulb. I can already tell where this is going. Okay. 
window, pot of soup, window, bathtub, the cook, furnace. I'm gonna... Door to outside. I'll come back. But I'm gonna see if my intuition is right. Path to town square. Rabbit overgrown bush. Ra sidebar. Pause menu. Backpack. Sharp pause menu. Sharp click. Wrap overgrown bush. Press space to use item. Press right. Take that and that. And there we go. these branches with me. You never know when they'll come in handy. Okay, that'll probably go in the fire to keep that going. Path to town square. Press space. All right, we got the window unblocked. Rabbit hole. So now we'll get window. sunlight for Door the plant. To kitchen. Let's go back in. Pot of soup. And you can. T I could totally do this without looking. Like I. I mean, I'm looking at the screen, but it's. I'm purely navigating by audio and the dialogue. So yeah, this is totally accessible to a blind player. Window. This is actually really well done. Bathtub. The cook. Furnace. This fire is about to go out. Of course it is. I should find some wood to feed it. I wonder. Didn't I tell you? Pot of soup. Window. Bathtub. The cook. Furnace. Door to outside. Sidebar. Pot. Backpack. Wooden branch. Pot of soup. Window. Bathtub. The cook. Furnace. I got you some fresh wood. Here you go. And there we go. The cook hands Annie a dark green watering can. For me? Why, thank you. I'll go fill this watering can for you. Ah, I'll probably go back to the fountain. Pot of soup. Press space to select window, bathtub. Let's window. see what the window. Let's see what she says about the window now. There's lots of sunlight getting in now. Yep, I yeah, I probably if I would have talked to the cook, to select. she would have told me, yeah, it needs light, it needs water, it needs heat. So we jumped the gun a little bit, but hey, I maybe just maybe have played a video game or two in my day. So you know, there's that window. Um, let's see. The cook. Let's go talk to the cook real quick. The king's favorite part of every celebration was the cook's famous crumble soup. But without this particular plant, the soup would not be as delicious as she wanted. Pot of soup. Window. Bathtub. The cook. Furnace. Door to outside. All right, so let's go back to the fountain. Path to town square. Let's go back. Seems pretty logical of a place that I could get some water. Fountain. What a lovely little fountain of let's the king it. of the combo. Okay, I fountain. can't interrupt. Press cool. space sidebar. Pause menu. Backpack. Watering can. Fountain. There we are. That should be enough water. Fountain. Path to Cook's house. Path to Town's rabbit hole. Window. Door to Cook's kitchen. Pot of soup. Sidebar. Pause menu. Backpack. Watering can. Pot of window. Bathtub. Here you go, Mr. Bulb. A nice cold drink just for you. With the bulb now happy with his new home, he began to flourish right in front of the young adventurer's eyes. Yay! The cook picks a few fresh leaves from the now-grown bulb. She walks over to her pot of soup and drops them in. It just took the right conditions 
and looking at the problem from a different point of view to get there. However, to the crumble's surprise, the leaves of the plant turned the soup a different color, making her worry all over again. Pot of soup. Press space to select. Mmm, yummy. The king is going to love this. The crumble gave out a sigh of relief. She could now sit back and relax with her new plant friend. <laughs> Yay, I beat a quest. Thank you for playing Stories of Blossom. Aww. We cannot wait to share the full game with you. Smiley face. Okay. Now what? Can I hit space? Okay. New game. Yep, Press. that's space. where I thought to it would select. end. Press. But you know right what? Arrow. That's a perfect introduction. Press. Left arrow to and again, previous item. I know some people are going to say that is very simplistic. Which, yeah, it kind of is. But like I said, this is meant... Like, it's it's a really, really well done um, story game for kids. And, you know, kind of learning to think about... Um, you know, you had... <clears throat> if you're teaching young kids about... You know, things that aren't right in front of them. Yeah, well, yeah you have a lot of the stuff that's in the cook's house... But then you had to go outside and trim the hedges, and then you even had to go back to the town square, you know, to to fill up the um, the watering can. So yeah, I mean, again, I didn't even have to, I didn't have to look at anything, but um, no, I mean, a nice little storybook adventure. Um, this was extremely well done. The accessibility features are excellent. You have audio, visual, controls, subtitles, um, just the whole tone. Just seems like a really chill, relaxing game. Uh, I don't know if this supports controllers yet, but like, um, I could see just kicking back with this on the Steam Deck, and even having that available for use on the Steam Deck. You know, give it to your kids; they could play it in the car. If they have a uh, generator to power the Steam Deck for a while. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, mean, um, I don't know if this is coming to other platforms besides PC. I could see this very easily coming to mobile, because you could just swipe left and right and tap or double tap. I mean, that's really all you're using. So, you know, again, even if people have dexterity, mobility issues, this is very easily controllable there's nothing at least so far timing based um you know and if people want to use a, a click um you know moving a pointer around with a mouse or a trackball or even like on a touch screen and they have vision i could see that working extremely well um but having the snap movement for not just the menus but the actual gameplay kind of just like as dusk falls Bravo, guys! Um, I wanted to play this a little bit earlier this week, but I've had this little ear thing going on. My left ear is still a bit plugged, and I'm, I was hoping that it would unclog itself, but it's still being stupid, so um, I decided I had to play it before the Steam Next Fest ended. I might upload this. I know you're not going to have much time, but um, if you watch this, this is a game that you can download for Steam and play the demo of just to kind of get a feel for the interface and try it yourself. Wishlist the game to support the developer. Um, but yeah, you know what? I mean, is this going to be for little kids? Sure, probably. But you know what? I'll play it. I just want to see whether where the entire, you know, what they do with the story, how they present things, if there's any other gameplay mechanics that show up later. Um, and again, it's great that this much accessibility has come into a game like this so i'm gonna wrap it up here i hope you guys enjoyed the video give it a like if you did share it and uh thank you to the developers for um including all these great accessibility features very well done and for surprising us with the demo during the steam next fest so give the video a like if you did share it
Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at BGFH79, twitch.tv slash illegally cited, illegallycited.com, and right here on YouTube. So until next time, I will chat with everybody again later.